Welcome back boys and girls. This is going to be part two of building identity framework integration with MartinDB, the document store on top of PostgreSQL. If you haven't watched the first episode in this episode, we are going to be setting up testing. All right. So if you don't know anything about integration testing or how to set it up, or perhaps uh, getting some ideas for what to test, uh, this uh, video might be very useful for you. So, you know, you don't have to follow anything. Just sit back, relax, and, uh, you know, enjoy the show. Don't forget, if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Don't forget to check out the description. And let's go ahead and get started. So last time we stopped at building out the package. We did a very simple integration and everything currently exists in one file. We didn't you know, bother too much of splitting anything out. Uh, we've set up a simple mockup and in program CS over here, I have connected to the local PostgreSQL DB server and we have add Martin store over here, which is a function from our package over here. Okay. So what I'm doing effectively here with the, the mock app, it's a ASP.NET Core application running on .NET 7. And this was a very quick way for me to sort of just reach in my hand into this application and see if it's working. Can I hook it up with the ASP.NET Core? That's where it's going to be used. And uh, can I interact with stuff? And I can. Now the question is, uh, how do I want to test it? Do I test it through the service over here or uh, do I do some kind of uh, other technique? Now, because this uses PostgreSQL, I'm not going to be doing things like, uh, for example, the Martin store user, I am uh, submitting an iDocument session into here. I'm not going to be mocking iDocument session. If you are into mocking and you think, okay, I'm going to put a mock of I document session. I'm going to call a method that looks something like create async, and I'm going to verify that the user I'm passing into here will be passed down into this insert function and save changes async is going to be called. All right. That sort of test, uh, depending on the framework, may verify that these things get called in order or not, etc. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't actually change uh, test that anything got saved in the database or not. So those type of tests uh, using uh, those type of mocking techniques, in my opinion, are useless. All right, we're not going to be doing that. Uh, we're going to be connecting to a real database and the way that you generally connect to a real, a real database is you use uh, test containers uh, with PostgreSQL. Okay, so for this, you're going to have to have Docker running. I already have Docker running. Uh, or if you have a machine that... Um, uh, let's say Postgres is running uh, PostgreSQL. You can actually connect it, connect to it directly. But some people don't have the PostgreSQL database running, and they don't want to be churning over the database table. So for some, this approach is acceptable. For some, it isn't. A more, um, how would you say, adaptable approach is just to have a PostgreSQL database in a Docker container. So that's what we're going to have. So anyway, test container, PostgreSQL, we go ahead and add that to the test project. So test identity Martin, let's go ahead and install that there. Once uh, that is installed, we're going to go into here and uh, we have the usings over here. I don't think uh, this matters too much. What we want to do is effectively set up a, a couple of fixtures. Okay, so let's call this integration fixture. And the point of the integration fixture is to be kind of like a, I don't know, an integration fixture. It's going to be a thing that is going to maintain the connection to the database, make sure that the database has started. And it's also going to ensure that the mock application that we have over here has started as well. Okay. So in the constructor, as the integration fixture is going to be spinning up, we have a PostgreSQL container. So we should be creating a new PostgreSQL container. And now that I'm thinking about it, I can't actually remember too much. Let's go ahead and open this up and make sure that we are, you know, uh, checking, uh, we're following the correct sample, all right? So there will be YouTube videos out there that probably already cover this scenario. You know, I, I, I could give you the, you put, you download this, you write this code uh, by, by reading the documentation first and then uh, forget about it. Or, you know, you could just 
go and read the documentation yourself, right? So here it is, uh, we're gonna have some kind of container. So this is a generic one. Probably wanna go into modules. Let's take a look at PostgreSQL, see what we have over here, or .NET, and there we have it. So PostgreSQL Builder, uh, let's go ahead and just copy this across, come back here. Uh, we will have start async. Uh, we don't want to place this here. We want to make this async disposable or actually I async lifetime. So I async disposable belongs to .NET. I async lifetime belongs to XUnit. And this is, if you will take a look at the namespace of I async lifetime, XUnit, uh, this is the interface that maintains the lifetime of uh, the integration fixture. Inside initialize async, I can go ahead, place this here, uh, reference the PostgreSQL container like so. So just create a field and uh, make this asynchronous. Cool. Uh, dispose uh, async, we just do the same, but for, but we put stop async, await, and perhaps we'll do something else here as well. So we got that. One important thing that you want to do here is, well, I think it's important. Uh, you can say with database, you can specify the name for your database. So let's say Martin and first identity Martin test. And then the second important thing is with exposed port. So what port are you going to expose, uh, you know, to the world? Uh, let's say something ridiculous, 4911. Uh, the reason you actually want this is so that you can actually connect to the, data, to the database and see what's inside of it, all right? Now, to make sure that it's working, what we're going to do is write a test test. So for now, let's just call this a test. Uh, we'll do a fuck, uh, fuck <laughs> not that kind of fact. Uh, public uh, void uh, do, it doesn't matter too much what it does over here. And... Uh, we are going to inherit from something. So from what do we actually want to inherit from in order to, you know, uh, stand up this integration fixture? First of all, what you will have to do is uh, you will have to create a collection for XUnit to recognize, it, uh, recognize this or to aggregate fixtures under this collection, right? So integration uh, fixture collection, all right? Uh, this will have to be collection definition and name of, you can give it this collection. Okay, place this over here. Uh, once we have this, this is the definition and we say that this is going to have a fixture for this collection and then we are gonna give it this integration fixture. Now, wherever we use this integration fixture collection, it's going to receive one of these instances. All right, we then create public class integration test, which is going to be part of the collection, the integration fixture collection. So collection, we say that it's same collection over here. Go down here again, give it a constructor. And in here, we will integrate the integration fixture, integration fixture, give it a, let's say property. This is going to have a get and there we have it. So once we have the integration test, when we go to the test, we can just inherit from the integration test and the integration fixture can be passed along like this. It will be injected automatically and will be available. So let's go to the console, write a line somewhere over here. And I'm just gonna say hello. Uh, the reason I'm doing this is I'm gonna put a breakpoint over here. I'm then going to start the debugger and let me actually open up my Docker. So we did hit the breakpoint, and I, if I go take a look at Docker Desktop, I'm gonna see the Docker container over here. Now it didn't start the correct port for me, so five seven nine nine, and I asked for forty nine one one. So let's uh, try the other uh, port uh, binding over here, and let me pass this over here. All right, uh, let's comment that out and debug this test again. There I am on the breakpoint, and now I have uh, the port that I want, all right? Although, if I take a look inside, uh, let's uh, look at this. We will see that the port has started, uh, that the server has started on uh, 5432. If we come back, uh, we have uh, 4911 to 4911 binding, all right? So we actually want 4911 to 5432 binding. All right, so let's come back to the integration fixture one more time. We're going to open up the with port binding and take a look at perhaps uh, some other overloads. So we have uh, 
uh, host, po host uh, port and container port. All right, so we can specify uh, two ports. So 5432, and uh, this should ju do just fine. Let's go ahead, debug this again. Uh, hit the breakpoint, and there we have it. All right, so now that I can see that we are going from uh, 49111 to 5432, and if I open up the container, I can see that the container has started in the same port. I'm confident uh, that it is running. So the reason that it is important to have something that you can connect to consistently, which is not clashing with other containers, is uh, most of the IDs are going to have something like a test container, okay? So in here, uh, let's go ahead and connect to a database. We will add a data source manually if we take a look at this. So uh, next, this is not Microsoft SQL, this is PostgreSQL, and this will be host localhost. This port, we want to change it. So 4911, next, and then the authentication. So authentication. Uh, I haven't actually set it up, but uh, you can do so here as well. So uh, let's continue debugging uh, like so with a username. We'll just say Postgres and we should have an equivalent with password. Okay, and password. So super simple. Again, let's go ahead and start the debugger. And while that's loading up, we can go ahead and uh, connect to a database again. So let me make this window a little bit bigger. Uh, new connection. Again, we're doing PostgreSQL. This is going to be 49111. Next, a username Postgres and password. Wait for us to hit the breakpoint. So we have the database actually running there already. So let's try to test the connection and the connection is successful. Here we're going to connect to the database have a look in there and uh, on here, here is the identity underscore Martin underscore test uh, database that we were looking at, All right? So I can go ahead and add this and now I can see the schemas for this database as well as the Postgres database, okay? So that is why it's useful whenever you're debugging and you wanna see the state of the database, you can effectively just stop in the middle of the test and inspect the things that are going on in your database and that connection is handy. And this is by the way, writers integration. So you can see how simple this was. I don't know if you can do uh, this just as simply in Visual Studio. The last time I tried, it was a complete headache. And, and that's the point where I realized, damn, writers just miles ahead, all right? We have gone ahead and set up this integration test. So what else do we want? We have the database starting. Another thing that we actually wanna start is something that we've added in the previous episode, I'm gonna mention this again, is we've added the Microsoft ASP.NET Core MVC testing package. So what this is going to do is this is going to spin up a instance of, of an ASP.NET Core application, but in memory, okay? All we have to do is have an application that is going to expose a program CS class for us, which we can then use to, well, uh, create a factory for those applications. So that factory is going to effectively, well, spin this up. So a good thing to do when you're testing this or when you're setting this up, again, place a breakpoint somewhere in your program CS file. We will need a, a public uh, a partial class. Uh, this is going to be program and give this a body. So the reason it's a, a partial class uh, program is because this file is called the uh, program and any top level file uh, that's uh, doesn't have a main function in it is considered to be the program class with the main function in it. In reality, this in the background will generate a program class. So just a little bit of trivia if you didn't know it. And when we're doing this, we are effectively hooking in to that class or we are, well, effectively, it's a way to extend a class, okay? And now we can actually reference this program class. And the way that you do it is again, as part of this in integration fixture, as we're going to be spinning up the database, we want to set up our new web application factory. But instead of just spinning up the web application factory, let's go ahead and create a class over here. So public class, we will call this our mock app. And this will inherit the web application factory, no constructor, and we put our program class over here, okay? Give this a body. Uh, the reason you want to inherit from this and not just uh, use the web application factory directly is you can actually override members. And this is where 
Once we have a connection string over here, we can uh, go ahead and supply it to the mock application and then actually use it during this mock app instantiation. Uh, again, moving a little bit fur uh, further, we want to go to configure web host, override this, and then on the builder over here, we can configure services and another method that we have here is configure test services, okay? Uh, what both of these are, uh, let's have a look at these. I think it will be a little bit easier to explain if I just go ahead and uh, grab this console right line, place one over here and then services, place one over here. So just like that, a semicolon here. And uh, there we go. So breakpoint, breakpoint, uh, services is an iService collection, and this services is an iService collection as well. Uh, the difference in these is the points at uh, which they're going to trigger. So that's what we're effectively going to try to uh, find out in this uh, experiment that we're about to do. So I'm just going to post a uh, comment out PostgreSQL container because, uh, well, we're, we're not going to be using it just yet. We're just going to create a new mock app. And the app, if you just run it. Let's go ahead and run the debugger here. We're going to see that the test completed without any uh, us hitting any of the breakpoints. So the service, the ASP.NET Core service instantiation doesn't actually happening uh, happen uh, in memory because you are never creating a client to interact with that service. So you're going to create a client and once you actually have a client uh, at this point, so let's put a breakpoint over here. Uh, we are going to debug here. We have created a mock application. We are going to create a client. So I'm just going to press F5 over here and the build is going to run. So the build of our application, let's put F8 and here you can see configure services is running. All right. So uh, with this, uh, let me, cause I uh, effectively it's on build. So I'm just going to put another breakpoint uh, right over here to I basically say once I'm going to go past the configure services line, it's going to go into configure test services, and then it is going to continue to try to start the application. Okay, so that is that. Let's go ahead and run this. So, so we saw the configure services run before configure tests. Configure services runs as let's say uh, before uh, all of the services uh, that you have uh, registered over here are, are configured with the container. So effectively this wraps everything and then this runs after everything has been ran over here, if that makes sense. So uh, to give uh, maybe a little bit of a better idea, let's say if we are going to create a PostgreSQL container that once we have a constructor over here, uh, we will have the PostgreSQL container again, uh, let's just pass it to the uh, constructor over here and actually maybe uh, just a string, right? So in the end, you may end up with a lot of parameters, create a class for it with a configuration. Here, I just uh, have a PostgreSQL uh, connection uh, string, okay? Uh, let's actually just call it connection, right? So here we have the PostgreSQL connection. Uh, do we want to provide this PostgreSQL connection to our web application service before it starts up and all of these services are assembled? Or we want to dig through our services after all of them are assembled and substitute a piece? I would say that potentially we actually want to just let it be there from the beginning. So we would have to put it into configure services over here. All right and not configure test services. So under services, we're going to find the configure function. You would be able to configure some kind of options if you have them. Otherwise, uh, we have configure Martin, a convenience function, which allows us to configure the current store options. All right, uh, going to the store options, we have a connection and we can actually go ahead and set it. So PostgreSQL connection and there we have it. Okay, so uh, let's check this out. I'm going to get rid of this uh, configuration over here. Uh, the new mock app in the PostgreSQL container, we can get a connection string and supply it to it like this. Uh, we are going to build a client. 
So instead of just having a local variable, let's go ahead and initialize a property. Once we have the property, we can go into the test and uh, you can uh, look on the, um, uh, where is it? Uh, this uh, dot integration fixture and get the client or on the integration test, uh, just have the HTTP client, all right? So sometimes you need both. Sometimes you wanna do a little bit more with the integration fixture. Uh, sometimes you just want the client. So you create your convenience uh, properties to get stuff from your integration fixture, all right? So uh, there you have the client. Now we can go to the client and uh, uh, make the same request we would usually do. Don't, don't try to parse anything. Uh, we're just gonna try to get and actually add user. If we actually come back over here, we have get add user and then the actual user. So let's check this out. We will await on this, make this test asynchronous. Uh, put a breakpoint over here. We're gonna take the result here and see what actually happens. Take the do function, debug. If I take a look at the result, the result code is 200. So potentially that means that something has been created in the database. I'm gonna take a look at the identity Martin test. Uh, let's take a look at all schemas. Uh, take a look into public once it is done refreshing or whatever it's doing. Tables, oh look, there we have the identity user. Uh, query console, actually not query console, I'll just double click and hopefully it gives me the data and there is the user. Perfect. So now the experiment that I did in my uh, previous episode where I checked uh, this manually in the browser, I can actually start writing tests for this. All right, so uh, let's uh, play this through, collapse this and we will go to the result uh, or rather let's assert equals a result. We're gonna go to HTTP status code and it's going to be okay. Uh, obviously the result uh, status code is what we're looking for and uh, swap arguments because uh, apparently the way that you put your arguments is super important. So uh, get uh, a result and this is going to be create a result, all right? So get result should be successful as well, all right? Uh, the test will be create uh, and read user, just like that. And then the test suite itself or the module can be called the ASP.NET Core integration because we're really testing with the ASP.NET Core fixture using the client. So my, some might say, well, oh, this is crap. Uh, your test effectively lives in the mockup over here where uh, here's the action that you perform and then you're a certain ca asserting cases on the other side. Uh, potentially, yes. Uh, other things that I'm testing over here is that uh, the for this setup that I'm doing with the service container using uh, the stuff that you would generally use when you're setting up your services in production, you can get your user manager injected, all right? The other service that I'm going to be registering, let's say it's going to be um, iRoll store. I also want to make sure that I have some endpoints for that service being correctly resolved. Other ways that you can test without actually calling these endpoints directly, but perhaps resolving the individual services directly is going to the iService collection directly. All right. So into the integration test where we have the integration fixture, let's delete a couple of these lines. Uh, and uh, where we have the client, we can effectively put a mock app here. And this is going to be the mock app and just call it app. Going to assign that right over here and didn't mean to build it. Let's go ahead and uh, pause this. You want an I service provider. Okay. A services and all of this is going to evaluate to app services and you're going to be able to effectively extract whatever service you want. So potentially this is not ideal because you're going to be reusing the same scope for this. So you actually wanna be creating a new scope for this. So 
uh, what you actually want to do is we're still exposing the app so we can get the iService provider on the integration test. Uh, we're going to add async lifetime, implement the interface. And uh, now uh, the, the thing to get here is that the integration fixture is going to be the thing that is persisted um, uh, in between all of the test runs. The class is still instantiated every single time. All right, so when we are initializing the class, we're going to go to the integration fixture. We are going to go to the services and we're going to uh, create a scope over here. Well, we'll say that we're going to store this on the class, uh, not like this. Uh, I actually want a property scope. All right, put it alongside with the other properties. And uh, then we also want an I service provider and services okay this can just be evaluated from the scope uh, service provider semicolon on here uh, here task uh, completed task all right and here as well return task complete a task grab the scope and we're going to dispose of it all right so we get a new scope of services every single time we are using this integration test. Sometimes you want to spin up the scope and bring it down as part of your individual test. But let's go ahead and perhaps add another test that is going to test the iUser store directly. All right. So iUser store tests, create the class. Uh, this is going to inherit from an integration test again let's go ahead and create a fact public avoid let's go to the identity builder extension and you know grab um i don't know a, a beefy looking test right or a beefy looking test what i'm talking about i'm talking about a a beefier function right we want to test maybe a couple of things uh, let's say uh Create, update, uh, just uh, CRUD operations, right? So CRUD operations, all right? Let's go ahead and test those. Uh, we're gonna go to services. We're gonna get required service, so it's not nullable. We're gonna get I uh, user uh, store. Let's get uh, the identity uh, user bar store. Let's go ahead, grab the store. We're going to create a sync, a new identity user and a cancellation token, none. All right. Then uh, on the store, uh, we want to get a user ID. So I think on here we can go ahead and uh, set the identifier ourselves. Uh, let's say it's going to be something like good, a new good to string. Uh, grab this over here of our user ID, uh, slap it on here. All right, assign it over here, get user by ID. So var user, I think for this, uh, again, we're gonna need to uh, pass a cancellation token, get user ID or rather get maybe find, yeah, find by ID. It uh, doesn't like the async because uh, the test is not asynchronous. Uh, so assert equal or rather, not null user and perhaps uh, you know uh, let's build up like a silly test we'll have uh, username tony format the full thing we'll have the username as tony we will then change the username to baloney uh, we're gonna go to store update async uh, submit the user with the cancellation token a semicolon on the end, await, uh, update uh, result. Now we're gonna have over here with the big R. Let's grab that and we should have six, uh, succeeded, right? So assert uh, true, put this over here. And I think uh, the create result, we wanna actually check that as well. Let's grab it, assert true, uh, succeeded, okay. Once we have updated it, let's make sure that when we're reading it, the value is actually updating itself. And, uh, you know, there might be test experts telling you that um, you're not using variables correctly. Ignore all of those comments. Uh, you know, these tests are for you. Uh, this is how I find my tests uh, to be readable.
and it also works uh, for you know uh, for the teams uh, that I worked in as well. So delay, delete async, uh, we're going to pass this uh, user over here. Again, cancellation token, none. Uh, I don't know if we have the delete uh, delete uh, result over here. I wait on this, we do. Now let's go ahead, grab it, uh, assert true, uh, that this has been successful. Try to find the user again, and this time the user should be null, all right? Uh, let's go ahead and give this a run and there we have it. We have a what's it called um, an exception. So the reason for the exception is if we go over here and take a look at the Martin user store. So the reason this is occurring is we have the equals over here and well uh, as it says in the error uh, Martin doesn't support that. So link query is uh, uh, using the equals uh, function doesn't support it. So anyway, uh, how do we solve this? So in, we're doing the equals because it is, um, well, at least uh, an approximation that we could potentially, you know, equate a ID, which is a T key to the user ID. We do understand what type of key it is on like the overall object. So if I do uh, not T user, but in T user, we understand that it's an identity user with T key. I could potentially do something along the lines of this and uh, maybe wrap it on a function, but then we don't really have an ident a table of uh, identity user. So, uh, I mean, there's a bunch of problems over here, I think. Um, uh, yeah, so a long time ago, I had similar problems where the operator and Martin doesn't really exist. So there, there are things that you can do. Uh, one of the things, if I remember correctly, is let's say we have this uh, uh, what's it called uh, this thing over here what you're gonna get is data and we're gonna use some uh, uh, if you've never seen this this might look a little bit foreign to you but this is a postgresql json integration okay and uh, i don't know if it's worth showing it here so let's connect to i don't know we had a test and uh, we had relations so select uh, all from empty doc identity user right and in here you're gonna have a data column so you're gonna have data here's the data and i want to select the id property so what i would do is i would say look get me the id property and uh, that would be it uh, i can then uh, say that I think I want this to be a good uh, maybe with one uh, nope uh, let me try this again and again and sorry I think uh, basically apologies as I try to remember my uh, what's it called uh, my PostgreSQL and I think now it should go with one as good that's gonna be the table name okay so double colon is that and i think it's uuid okay there we go so not good uuid uh, again sorry it's microsoft the only one that has its own notations uh, i keep forgetting it uh, the rest of the developer community have uh, more standardized names okay so universally unique identifier so we have the data column uh, there we select uh, out of the document we select this property and we're going to try try to cast it to the uid the reason i need to, to slashes here is because if i uh, the, the two arrow heads is if it's a single arrow head it's going to be the json b uh, format basically uh, if you think about either having a c sharp string or the adjacent property object that could still be you know uh, you can interact with it as a uh, as part of the json api so this basically just can make sure make sure i extract the string and then i cast it to an actual uuid all right so uh, i want to check if um, uh, this uh, thing is equal to this thing or something like that right so f is false uh, I'm effectively gonna take, uh, let's say, do I need uh, these parentheses over here? I don't think I do. Okay, so that is still going to return false. I'm gonna grab this and I am going to go to my matches SQL over here, all right? Uh, go ahead, place this here, and then the value that I'm going to supply over here. Uh, I don't know if I need to place it into curly braces or not, but. Uh, 
uh, this might be all I need. So now comes the question of uh, uh, how much coverage do you uh, do you need? Like, are, are we gonna try it with uh, all of these ID strategies? And uh, you know, maybe we will eventually. We can add uh, tests to it, etc. Uh, let's go ahead and supply the good over here. Uh, same thing on the matches SQL. This is going to be int ID and again the same thing over here so long id uh, let's bring up the test runner run this again and there we have it the test is passing so one thing that is left to do sometimes when you're use, reusing the same database between calls here i think we're mostly relying on uh, named parameters and stuff like that so uh, it should actually just uh, return, you know, the things directly. So ASP.NOCOR integration here, you can see it has actually started failing, uh, potentially uh, because if we go to program CS over here, I'm not supplying the name. So what I want to do is actually supply Bob. Well, let's go ahead and try that. All right, name Bob. Let's run it. All right, all together now. And there it is. So both of these are pretty much integration tests, again, because I actually like testing against database and I'm not gonna be supplying mocks into my services. Now, you can avoid using a mock app the way that I did it here and just get the dependency injection package and effectively set up your own iService provider or effectively assemble all of these instances yourself, if that makes sense. So you would create uh, and uh, supply whatever services you need for the uh, de -de 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 -de, the Martin uh, user store instance that you have here, which would really be just the I document session, but then you don't get the knowledge of Ah, uh, yeah, actually, when I'm running my mock application, yes, my integration actually works with this sample application. So it does work with ASP.NET Core and it's actually capable of assembling uh, these user manager uh, instances and uh, later on role managers, right? But this will be it for this episode. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. If you have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. I know this is uh, a bit on the longer side, but hopefully you're getting a lot of information on you know, how to build a package and how to test. As always, a big and special thank you to all of my patron supporters. I really appreciate it. And if you enjoy um, the work that I do and would like to support it, please do so on my Patreon. The source code for this video is free. So don't forget to check out the description. Again, thank you for watching. Have a good day.